This episode of Recording Studio Rockstars is brought to you by OWC, Jay-Z Microphones, PreSonus, Spectra 1964, and API Audio. So get ready to rock. The world is not waiting for your next record. That is one of the most important things that you can ever pass on to an artist. And if they take that in, they actually have the possibility to make the best record they can possibly make. Most people have this idea that they got to rush, rush, rush. You don't have to work so hard to rush stuff out so you can tour it and this and that. It's like, it's not going to make any difference. Welcome to Recording Studio Rockstars. I'm Lid Shaw, and this is the podcast created to help you become a rock star of the recording studio. If you feel like the fast pace of computer tech has made your Studio Mac obsolete, then think again. OWC is your personal studio tech for memory and speed upgrades, DIY installs, and use Macs perfect for recording and mixing. Why ditch your existing computer when you can take your studio far into the future with the Mac you've already got? Learn how to supercharge your studio and find out how awesome your Mac can be at OWC.com so that you can focus on making great music. If you want a digital audio workstation that will give life to your music from sketching a new idea to composing, editing, mixing, and mastering a finished record, then you want Studio One from PreSonus. Studio One is easy to use with intuitive drag and drop simplicity, making it great for beginners, yet flexible and powerful for experienced producers. Whether creating beats, recording a band, or composing a blockbuster film soundtrack, you will find everything you need to create your masterpiece. Download your free version of Studio One Prime and get started now at PreSonus, wherever sound takes you. Hey, Rockstars, it's your host, Lid Shot. Welcome back to Recording Studio Rockstars, bringing you into the studio to learn from recording professionals so that you can make your best record ever and be a rock star of the studio yourself. My guest today is Michael Beinhorn. Joining us again on the podcast, it's actually been since episode nine that he was with us the first time, so we're mm. thrilled to have you back, Michael. Thank you. Michael has lived his life in pursuit of artistic expression, initially as a visual artist, then as a performer, and finally as a record producer. Michael began in 1979 as co-founder of the seminal New York music collective Material and has since produced and or recorded a long list of artists, including Brian Eno's Lizard Point from Ambient 4 on Land, Herbie Hancock's Future Shock, which included the groundbreaking cut Rocket, the Red Hot Chili Peppers breakthrough albums The Uplift Mofo Party Plan and Mother's Milk. Michael's recordings have achieved combined worldwide sales of more than 45 million albums sales, helping to define the characters of a diverse range of artists, including Soul Asylum, Hole, Soundgarden, Ozzy Osbourne, Courtney Love, Marilyn Manson, Social Distortion, Korn, and Mew, to name just a few. And over the past 20 years, Michael has become increasingly aware of the concerns facing artists and producers alike who are trying to maintain their creative ethics, personal expression, and focus through the recording process. He has increasingly devoted his attention to artist development the changing music industry, and various ways to improve the quality of contemporary popular music. For this reason, Michael has become more active in mentoring fellow artists and aspiring record producers. He's extensively addressed these and other pertinent issues also in his book, Unlocking Creativity, published by Hal Leonard. Michael started an innovative online consulting service at beinhorncreative.com that remotely provides all the functionality of music production to artists who would otherwise be unable to afford these services. Additionally, he's given lectures at universities and recording schools and is in the process of creating a university-level interdisciplinary course on music production that takes a philosophical, non-technical perspective on the subject. So I'm psyched today to really talk with Michael about the topic of production, pre-production, and all the aspects that make records great that don't have to do with which microphone you choose. <laughs> so please welcome back to Recording Studio Rockstars, Michael Beinhorn. Michael, are you ready to rock, dude? I am ready to rock. Man, it's an honor to have you back on the show. And I, was, I couldn't believe how long it had been since we did the first interview. So yeah. welcome back. 
Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, you know, on the on the previous episode, we really talked more about your background, even though I could talk about that all day long. Um, I know your time is precious and thought we would just sort of jump forward into what you're up to these days. And um, tell us more about Beinhorn Creative. Um, well, uh, it, that's a very broad topic. Um, it's it, it just, it, it's developed in response to, I feel how, I guess, narrow and more narrow the, the treatment and attitude towards uh, music production has become, particularly when you're talking about rock music. Mm-hmm. Um, I f- I'm finding that people are starting, are really kind of leaning more toward formulaic approaches to how they make recordings. Yeah. And if your mind doesn't work in that particular way, which honestly, I think most creative people, if they take a step back from their process, they at their core, they want to do things their way because they hear things their way. I mean, we got into music because we loved it, not because we thought that it was going to be like a convenient slot to fall into. But I feel that that's what production, music production has become now. And I really, in, and in that process, I feel that music, people are making music that's less inspired. Um, I think it's probably more interesting Texturally, than music has ever been before because of all the um, the technical capabilities we have at our fingertips. But you know, as far as making music that ha- that's compelling, emotional, that really connects with people, which is the essence of what uh, my my feeling that music ultimately is, I think it's much harder to do. And as things become more production centric in a formulaic sense. I feel that we're losing a little bit of that emotional edge and that connection. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do something that would, since I think the essence of this also becomes about finance and how expensive it is to actually do this kind of work. I, I, you know, I wanted to focus on something that would bring aspects of the production process to artists at every level. And one of the issues is obviously prep. You know, yeah. prepping a, a recording for so that it can actually be as good as it can possibly be. No one has time to do this, and it's obvious why because no one's got like very few artists have enough money to throw at a, a record producer and say, "Here, hang around on my record for like two or three months and help me organize these songs." It's more like, "Here, have this money, and I'll expect you will be recording my record for the next week to three weeks, and right. you know." And mixing it, and you know, getting everything done, so so we can, you know, so we can release it. So the process of making a record is no longer about like organizing a song cycle that really, really kind of speaks to yeah. who the artist is, but rather trying to get a job done. Which it's, again, it's more about like how many songs can we get done today? You know, how many will well, we have done by by dinner? Yeah, ex- exactly, uh, and. If you take that process apart and you look at the fact that people aren't really able to analyze their own music very well, which of course is, it's understandable because functionally speaking, artists are very subjective about their own work. Yeah. You know, it's it's. Uh, I think that there are a few that can be objective and oftentimes have very wonderful insights into their own work, especially since they created it. But by and large, they 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 have trouble being analytical about it from an objective point of view. So they're always, there's always going to be need for someone who can get under the hood with them and go, check this out, check that out, see how that's not working, see how that part's not supportive to your vocal line. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I, and I feel that artists are being depri- have been deprived of that now for, you know, we're, we're going like 15, 20 years that the whole process of pre-production has been kind of like, has been shunted to, to one side uh, because of budgetary issues mainly. So yeah. I wanted to try and bring that back into the equation more for people, you know. Uh, well, you make a really and- interesting point too. You talk about how um, now there's almost more colors in the palette because of the tools for making music and also because of the access to any young musician like the this vast library of of history of music that they can access, it's an interesting huh. conundrum that they're up against. Like less and less um, devotion to the the you know the why of the you know where's the emotion of this music coming from before using all these tools. Well, why is always the question. 
<laughs> Why yeah. is always the right question to ask? How is not the question to ask? We know how. It's easy. And how is always dictated these days by budget? Like, if you don't have this much money to make a record, this is how you're going to do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but, but people, it, it's very easy to avoid. Why? Because it, it takes you out of asking the fundamental questions, you know, of what it is that you're actually trying to achieve by making these songs. You know, you know why am I doing this? What am I trying to express? Mm -hmm. You know, what does this mean to me? Because again, if we go back to music at its most fundamental, it's about expression. It's a, and it's about connecting with people. Even in, in, in primitive societies, music is about connection and communication. Um, it's, and it's about communicating an idea or a feeling or a thought. And we have less and less of that in music, which is, again, one reason why I feel that it's actually less sticky and more disposable now. So yeah. the artists, I feel, have to be steered back. It's imperative for their survival and their ability to have longevity in their careers to be steered back to a position of, of self-assessing from a, yeah, from, I guess, a philosophical point. Why am I doing this? You want the critical details from your microphone to get through to your recording, and the Spectra 1964 101 amplifier provides just that. With unequaled headroom, low noise, and a linear output, irrespective of transient audio peaks. Used by Tom Dowd, Muscle Shoals, Stack Studios, and The Record Plant on records by ZZ Top, Aerosmith, Bruce Springsteen, and John Lennon, Spectra 1964 brings that same incredible sound to your studio with the new STX 600 mic pre with built-in comp limiter. Start making classic records again at spectra1964.com. Are you sick of microphones that make your music sound harsh and brittle? The new Amethyst mic by Jay-Z Microphones brings you a rich, warm tone with perfect detail using the Golden Capsule technology. Resulting from 30 years of microphone design, the Amethyst is hand-built using carefully selected parts with Class A discrete circuitry, extremely low self-noise, and an advanced shock mount to make sure your recording sound awesome. This is my voice on the Amethyst right now. Use the limited-time coupon ROCKSTARS to get 50% off the Amethyst mic at jzmic.com. Well, what, what are some answers to why? I mean, how? two questions. One is, how do we start identifying the why in the music that we're going to create? And two is, just how deep and earth-shattering does that why have to be for us to start making a record? The answer to that is, it's all subjective. It's, and it varies from artist to artist. It doesn't, it's, it doesn't have to, and it shouldn't be the same thing for each artist. It's going to be something completely different and completely unique. As long as I feel the artist is able to get to a place, understand what it is that they're communicating, or not even where they, to a point where they can explain it, but more where they can just access it and work with it. You know, yeah. work with, that ex, with their own sense of expression as a tool in their toolkit. And that's really what I try and teach people. I try and give them that sense of, okay, let's go, let's go back into this. What does this song mean? What are you trying to say here? What are you trying to say in general? You know, what's the purpose of all this? Because I'm telling you, man, if you can't do that, then you don't, you're not really explaining to people that you would like as your audience why they should be paying attention to you and what you have to offer them that, that's going to inspire them enough to feel good or to feel bad, even if that's what they're looking for, to want to listen to what it is that you're doing. Yeah. You know, when, when people talk about public speaking, for example, or writing an essay, they, one of the lessons you learn is this idea of start by telling everybody what you're going to tell them and why, and then tell them, and then conclude by telling them what you just told them and why. Do you mm. see any correlation to the music uh, making process? Um, yeah, I think there's a correlation in that. Absolutely. You know, but it's but because music is more of a delivery system, um, and it delivers it delivers its payload in a completely different way. It's not always literal. There isn't always a literal sense to it. Yeah. You know, sometimes people will use words as poetry or just you know just purely to paint pictures. But that may be the place where they're actually telling you how they feel or what it is that they want you to see. You know, but the music that has conveyed a sense 
a mood, a feeling, an idea the most accurately is in, you know, from, from my perspective, that's always been the most successful music. And now I'm not talking about it in terms of pure art, but I think that this is where people make a tremendous distinction to their detriment, by the way, Mm -hmm. between commerce and art, you know, that you can't have commercial music and have it be artistic at the same time. I would challenge anyone who takes that point of view, you know, because every single artist, you know, over a long span of, of centuries has made music that was incredibly expressive and at the same time, you know, com- highly commercial. I mean, what the heck do you think a guy like Mozart was doing? I mean, he wasn't <laughs> he, he wasn't just trying to be an artist. He was also trying to put food on his table and support his family. And he was very, very good at what he did. And a lot of people wanted to pay him for it, you know, and he yeah. was extremely successful. People loved his work. I mean, the you know, his last opera, The Magic Flute, ran for 10 years in Vienna after he died. Like people people were flocking to see it, you know. Um, and I, I can take that all the way up to, you know, <laughs> Highway to Help by ACDC or a record like that. I mean, mm-hmm. it's... It, it these those may be some of the stupidest lyrics that you've ever heard, but by God, you know, I'm for one thing, the guy lived it anyway, so it's not that stupid. Yeah. But like, you know, but but it's telling you something. It's telling you a story. It's bringing you in. It's giving you a feeling. It's it it the music is being used as a vehicle to convey some kind of state, emotional, um, sensory intellectual, whatever it is, and it's doing it incredibly well with great accuracy. Well, you had pointed out previously, um, I'm paraphrasing, but essentially the idea that music is the most effective vehicle with which to communicate emotion in the creative yep. arts. Um, and, yep. you know, obviously we see that every day in film production, you know, that the, mm-hmm. it's the music that actually conveys the emotion of the image so, so easily. And um, yeah. and then you also uh, brought up another thing where you're talking about like um, finding out. I forgot how you phrase it, but you said you know you figure out if there's something that is like your touchstone for the why of this record and what you're creating. And um, you had mentioned previously that sometimes you can like find a physical feeling within yourself or other aspects like that to keep connecting with to help you stay in touch with that. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate yeah. on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean. Th- <laughs> my 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 sense of it is they don't call them feelings for nothing. You know, right. you actually, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have a somatic reaction to to your emotions in the same way you have a somatic reaction to music that you love. You can feel it in your body. It, you know, you you respond to it, and that's very very ancient um, physical mechanics. In, in motion, you know, it, it, and it, but it speaks to the refinement of like the human, the human being as an animal that's evolved over millions of years. Um, but when we hear, when we hear things that, that are, that are beautiful or that affect us emotionally, that relate to us in, in some way, short, shape or form, either because of who we are, well, who we are is shaped by our experience anyway, but all, all this stuff, it, it you know, it, it has a sensory or somatic effect on a person, you know, and not, it's not just mental, it's in the body. You, you know, that's why people say, well, that gives me, that gives me goosebumps, you know, oh, I can feel that in my back or in my neck, you know, that makes the hair on my neck stand up on end. This is, that's, that's all part of the sensory apparatus that lets you know that you're connecting emotionally with a piece of music, you know, or if it gives you a sensation in your throat where you're like, oh, you know, you get all choked up. Yeah. It's it's the same exact thing, and by uh, by the same token, that sa- that 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 same system can be used as a way to gauge what it is that you're listening to when you're in a, an analytical state. You know, yeah. um, that's that's how I've that's how I've always worked. Tell us a little bit more about like what what is your studio setting like today? What is your workspace? Um, where are you? And how is it that, um, you know, you're sort of tapping into this new technical um, opportunity to be able to actually work with people remotely? Huh. Uh, workspace. <laughs> <laughs> My funny. workspace is, 
It, it, no, it is um, because it's uh, essentially anywhere. My everything that I'm using fits into um, about um, three Pelican ca <laughs> cases that can be transported on a plane. Uh, I've actually worked inside of a uh, a tent that's used for um, video editing on site because it's dark and it's more immersive that way, and I can really focus without any kind of um, uh, any, any kind of visual stuff around me that can be distracting because wow. I, like everyone else, have mobile devices and my attention span is shot to hell. But yeah, I know that um, feeling. And and I should point out, rock stars, of course, if as you can tell, we're Michael's kind enough to join us on this interview remotely from a phone. So if we get any kind of interference, it's just because we're at the mercy of Skype and the internet. But um, that's yeah. that's cool. I like this idea of like an immersive tent. Um, and I, I think of you as somebody who's acutely in touch with, um, you know, this process of creation and, and the ability to make sure that the, you know, the true depth of what's being created is there. So keep talking about that. I mean, like, you know, the rest of us are just like driving around town in rush hour traffic, listening to the <laughs> track and going like, you know, should, yeah. we, should we tighten this on the grid more? Right. Well, you know, I mean, sitting around driving, you know, in traffic is... If you're listening at all, that's the best way to start. I'm I'm fortunate in that I can set up a really high-end listening um, system anywhere in the world at this point. I mean, a few months ago, I found myself in a um, in someone's house in in Amsterdam producing a record in Kentucky. <laughs> wow! You know, yeah, I was I, I was set up. I didn't have like a full my full system with me, but it was enough to work with and. All I need beyond that is a really, really good internet and the kind of software that I'm using, and I can tap into anyone's project and listen to what they're doing in real time. And uh, it's 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 an incredible process. You know, I really feel like this is I feel like this is the way forward in a sense for people because it also it kind of it 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 cuts down on the amount of of FaceTime that one has to have. With an, with an artist, like actually being physically in the room with them, but still being present with them and being able to help them through what they do. And that, that ch to me, that changes the financial scope of this immensely, the budgetary scope. If you're ready to upgrade your studio to the famous sound of API's large format consoles, then you're ready for The Box, a small format console featuring the same analog circuitry and original 2520 op amp design that has made API famous for 50 years. Record through eight world-class mic pre-channels, mix through 24 smooth-as-glass faders, and blend mics, analog effects, and parallel compression at the speed of electrons rather than the speed of your computer latency. Upgrade Upgrade your home studio to legendary status with The Box from apiaudio.com. Can you um, break down any of the tools for us so we can get a better picture of it? I mean, is this, are these trade secrets or can, can no. we talk about some of the no, stuff that helps make this work? No, they shouldn't be trade secrets either. I mean, I think that there are other systems out there, but right now I'm using uh, a uh, software system called Source Connect. Um, right. Which people have been using a lot for mix, but I found that if I use it the other way, I'm I'm able to get like a, a direct feed off someone's DAW, mm -hmm. and I can listen up to 192. Although because of the conversion, I think it goes down to 48. Um, but generally, I can get like I can get a direct signal. Otherwise, it's a stream. But because of, because my playback system is so accurate, I can hear stuff. Uh, better than someone can in a control room. Because um, your headphones, because you just got great headphones. It's not just the headphones. I mean, I'm I'm bypassing the DAC. On, I'm using a, a, a MacBook Pro, um, obviously with an SSD. Mm -hmm. But um, I have a different. I front ended it with a different DAC. Um, Right now, I'm using a bunch of DACs by a company called uh, Cord Electronics, which is all, that's all really hi-fi. They're a mm. British company. Um, I, I love their stuff. Um, I'm also using a system called the Sonoma M1, which is made now by a company called Warwick. They're British too. Um, and there's another system by Warwick called um, an 
Imperio, which is stratospherically expensive, but <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to wind up with one of those pretty soon, I think. Um, but it's essentially the, the, the same as having a bunch of monitors, like a bunch of really, really high end monitors. But again, you're using, um, the Audi's, um, LCD fours, which are terrific. Yeah. I really, um, I just, and, just um, discovered the Audi's and love the way that they sound. Audi's A. Yeah. Well, <laughs> potato, potato. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, I was um, just remembering how they were telling me. But uh, yeah, oh, no, they're, okay. they're well, very I appreciate cool. The, they're wonderful. Yeah, and I, and I have a set of LCD threes as well because uh, they sound slightly different. Um, but it, it it gives me a good reference point when I'm listening. Um, I also should point out that uh, in some cases I'll also go to um, Audio Technica M50s because they have a particular sound that I'm familiar with, and um, they can they, they can be good if I'm listening to stuff that's really light in the bass because there's a nice hump um, around like one twenty one fifty or something like that all the way down, mm-hmm. pretty low, and. Um, it enhances bass response pretty well for me, um, and uh, yeah, between those systems, I'm I'm able to get everything that that I might need, and um, the the playback is incredible. Oh, one of the things that Chord makes is also this um, the Make an Up sampler device, which um, takes their DAC, which is called Dave. <laughs> um, <laughs> this up sampler will um, up sample. Stuff that's at 44.1 to the highest sample rate is about 7.15 at 24 bits. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's. I don't understand how they're able to do that math, but um, it's. I, I've messed around with up samplers, and it's. I, I've never tried. I've never heard anything like this before. It's unreal. Well, so that's pretty cool. So you're just hearing like incredible detail and accuracy. Um, I imagine just hearing a great frequency response is probably a big part of being able to help with that too. But um, what was I going to say? Oh, I was also I was going to point out Rockstars as we're talking about um, DAX. That's DAC, which stands for Digital Audio Converter. Just in case you didn't didn't know what that was. But um, what what other things really help in in this? production environment I mean what about just the communication back and forth with the with the band or with the you know engineer on the other side um I basically I found an app that will turn your command button on your Mac into a talkback button and pretty much set okay cool. <laughs> that's about cool. it you know on this project that I was working on with this band in Kentucky um they had a uh, they had to make a dedicated line so we could use the Source Connect uh, software because it needs at least thirty um, megs download for it to be functional. Um, and if we, we discovered that if we had anything else on the line, like so that we could have a video connection, it would really mess up the transmission for them. Right. So we've basic we've had to do all of our sessions without any kind of accompanying visuals. And I have to say it hasn't, it hasn't made any difference at all. Very you cool. Know? Cool. Well, yeah, it's wonderful. Well, let's take a, a brief break for a second. Rockstars, we'll be right back for the jam session. Um, and I want to remind you that I have links to what we're talking about here with Michael, um, which again, it's awesome to have you here today, Michael. Um, in the Thank show you. notes, in the blog post, so just click through, including a wonderful playlist of many, many fantastic records that you got to check out of Michael's. And we'll, we'll be back in just a minute for the jam session. You know what it feels like when inspiration hits and you want to capture your great song idea, but then the studio gets in the way and it's just no fun anymore. Wouldn't it feel awesome if you could simplify the process of producing your music from inspiration to final masterpiece? PreSona Studio One is a powerful digital audio workstation that helps you compose your music with a complete collection of virtual instruments for keyboards and drums, MIDI tools for hip-hop, EDM, and film, a flexible sketch pad with 
chord charts and key recognition for songwriting and arranging, and classic effects pedals and amp simulators for guitar and bass. With 37 high quality effects plugins, integrated Melodyne, and drag and drop flexibility, you can easily edit and polish your mixes. And Studio One is the only DAW with a built in mastering studio so that you can take your record from writing to radio ready all in one place. Download your free version of Studio One Prime and get started now at PreSonus, wherever sound takes you. If you're using a Mac in your recording studio and you're tired of feeling like the studio setup you worked so hard to create is becoming obsolete too quickly, then Otherworld Computing is the solution for you. OWC can help keep your existing Mac and studio current and relevant so that you can make great music. Whether you need to upgrade your RAM, install an SSD, add more connectivity, or simply find a great used Mac, you can get the most mileage out of your studio with OWC. Offering a vast library of DIY installs videos, 24-7 friendly support, and free shipping in the U.S. on most items over $49, there's no need to get frustrated when you can achieve the speed to create and the capacity to dream at OWC.com. Hey, Rockstars, we're back now for the jam session. My guest today is Michael Beinhorn joining us from L.A. I think you're in L.A., right? In Yes, I am. Okay, cool. And kind enough to join us from phone and and vehicle, in fact. So, uh, again, we're honored to have you back on the show, Michael. Are you ready to to kick off the jam? I'm ready to. I'm ready to continue where we left off. Good. That's a much better way to say it. Um, <laughs> what What are some of the first steps? I mean, I guess we kind of covered some of the first steps in pre production in terms of uh, you know figuring out what the why of the record is. Um, and uh -huh. also, you know, having the tools to be able to do this, uh, particularly with the remote. But, um, you know, what are some of the first things that that maybe every artist goes through with starting a new record? Um, does this process have to be only record focused or can it be about helping produce singles? Um, and then also, like, how long does the pre-production process take? Um, all that's variable and, and, and yes, it doesn't have to be a full recording. I, I tend to prefer to do a full recording with it just so, um, the artist really gets the best, the best out of it. Because to me, pre-production also includes trying to figure out how the artist's music kind of works together as a body mm -hmm. instead of like an individual song. Um, so I, I feel it's more effective that way. I've had people request it, so um, I'm happy to do it. But yeah, by and large, I, I think it's I, I think it's more effective for the artist because it gives them it gives them greater context. And I think context is one of the most important things I feel when you're making a recording on so many levels. So if an artist approaches you or or us in a situation like this. And they say, you know, we want to hit the studio. Um, we want to do it as soon as we can. You know, and we're, as a producer, we're talking about this process of making sure they're ready to hit the studio. Um, what What's a good way to figure out what the time frame should be for pre-production versus recording? Um, and, you know, how can we help a band budget for those things? Just just generally speaking, you know, common, common struggles. Um, I find that... Uh you know, it, it once again, it's variable. But one thing I do notice is that once artists discover that a they can um, they can actually look into their own music that they that just by having someone else's kind of eyes on what they're doing, that they actually have the opportunity to look into their own music from a, a slightly more objective point of view, and also, to give them certain affirmations um, regarding questions that they've had about their music but have actually internalized, which many artists do, um, it becomes, it becomes, um, well, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a never-ending uh, situation, but artists will generally take a step back from what they're doing and go, hold on a sec, because they've been given, they've been given a great gift. The ability to be able to see their own work through someone else's eyes, yeah. and 
also, and further, the realization, and this is one of the most profound realizations an artist can have. And I can't overstress this. The world is not waiting for your next record. <laughs> that is one of the most important things that you can ever pass on to an artist. And if they take that in, they actually have the possibility that from that moment to make the best record they can possibly make. Most people have this idea that they got to rush, rush, rush to get this stuff done. But the reality is, is that like no one cares. And I'm not saying that to be diminishing or anything like that or to hurt anyone's feelings. It's really that in the grand scheme of things, you don't have to work so hard to rush stuff out so you can tour it and this and that. It's like, it's not going to make any difference. In fact, it's going to be more detrimental to your career and to what you do going forward. Um, with the artists I've worked with, I've had the same thing happen. And this has happened on recordings where we've actually had very large budgets to work with. The artist all of a sudden goes like, hold on a second. I never even thought about this. you know. And then all of a sudden we're kind of in a, uh, you know, in, in a time frame where there's, that, where there's no... There, where there's no clock, <laughs> yeah. you know, everything just sort of stops and they're like, all right, I'm going to take a moment here because I really, you know, having, having the understanding that no one is, that no one's waiting for what they're doing means that they can do whatever they want. And what a sense of freedom that gives an artist. Holy mackerel. You know, all of a sudden they're like, wait, I can actually make the record I wanted to make instead of rushing out a pile of crap. <laughs> yeah. You know, an, a, a th another thought about that is just this reminder that like every great record that we've ever heard started out as having no idea before they knew what they were going to do. Um, I would say, I would say for the most, well, I, I mean, everything in some sense comes from nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So, you like, know, like, and, and allowing oneself to figure out what it is that you're going to do before doing it is such a great reminder of trying, yeah. trying to get our, our why right. Well, yeah, exactly. If you want to capture every nuance of a great performance in your studio, then you're going to need to start with a microphone that is crafted with great care and attention to detail. Jay-Z Mics and Riga Latvia designs amazing sounding microphones that are handcrafted with jeweler's precision to bring you incredible detail in your recordings. At the heart of Jay-Z Microphones is the unique Golden Drop capsule design, which uses a lighter, faster diaphragm that delivers great clarity and fidelity while avoiding distracting colorations and distortions. This is my voice right now on the new Amethyst microphone with Class A discrete amplifier circuitry, extremely low self-noise, and advanced built-in shock mount technology to bring an expensive sound to your studio for an affordable price. Jay-Z offers a five-year warranty, free shipping to the U.S., and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Plus, for a limited time, you can use the coupon code ROCKSTARS to get 50% off the Amethyst microphone at jayzmic.com. During the height of record making, Tom Dowd, Muscle Shoals, Stack Studios, Ardent Studios, and the New York City Record Plant all turned to one company to build their consoles. That company is now Spectra 1964, carried on today through Bill Cheney and Jim Romney. The extremely stable, high-speed circuit design of the 101 amplifier provides unequaled headroom, low noise, and linear output irrespective of transient audio peaks, giving you cleaner, punchier, dynamic recordings. Spectra 1964 brings you the sound of ZZ Top, Aerosmith, Bruce Springsteen, King Crimson, John Lennon, and so many more. Created by the missile engineers who are central in rolling out the systems that protected the free world for over half a century, Spectra 1964 literally brings rocket science to your studio. With the STX 600 mic pre with built-in comp limiter, full frequency passive BBDI, and C610 dedicated comp limiter, start making records that last a lifetime time at spectra1964.com. Once we get to the point where, you know, we've helped the artists sort of step back and take a look at it and really appreciate this pre-production process, I imagine one of the challenges can be, both as a producer as in an artist, is, is figuring out how to help the artist find their genuine voice, their authentic voice in music. Is there, do you have yeah. any thoughts around that and what that means and... and if are there any basic methods that could help anybody start to discover that? Um, 
yeah, it goes straight back to what we were talking about before. There's, there, there, it's it's such a great big catch-all. Just trying to, um, you know, to 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 give the artist the space they need to create. And, um, you know, trying to figure out who they are and why and all that, like that, it's amazing how how many doors that can open. I think, you know, honestly, that, that, that in itself can often do the trick. I mean, short of actually sitting down with a person and kind of soul searching with them and like, what is it that you're trying to say? We're just kind of. You know, I mean, when when you get into that kind, that level of psychodrama and and you're at, and it, and it becomes because some people don't want to do that. Right. <laughs> um, artists are very are very sensitive. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> um, by nature, and um, you you know when you put them when, when when they when they have trouble kind of figuring this out on their own. Um, I think directly aud- auditing them for the answer sometimes that can wind you up in in really kind of dangerous waters. Mm-hmm. Um, I find some people can can sort of over intellectualize the process, um, you know, and I th- and I think that also that also kind of tells you who is actually. Um, who, who, who this type of process is appropriate for, or I should say rather, who is is going to has the potential to be successful as an artist? Because if they can access that sort of thing, then you know you're you're in the you're you're basically going to get the best that you can get out of them, you know, and yeah. they will only gr- they'll only grow over time. So as far as authenticity, to be able to. To be able to access why, that's one of the most powerful parts of that person, you know, and and the sense that, you know, hey, you don't have to make music that sounds this way. You don't have to make music that sounds that way. You know, you can make the record that you want to make. You can make, because a record that feels like you, if you're someone that people want to listen to, is going to be the record that people will want to listen to. You know, not the one where you're aping something else that you heard on the radio because someone told you that it was going to be like that. That's the only way to make, you know, the only kind of music to make that other people are going to want to hear. Yeah. No, I think that's great. And, and uh, you know, I think two records that have really moved me and they come from artists who did a unique thing. And that's what stood out and, and stuck with me so much. And again, it was an artist who didn't just copy what somebody else was doing, but did their own thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Well, part of the, one of the things you mention in you know on your website as far as the production process is is um, getting the songs ready and, and repair song repair was something that came up. So a question for you is how do we know if songs are ready for a record and how can we repair them? Um, <laughs> you this like, is the you like my of- general questions that just. <laughs> No, no, no. There, but they're 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 spot on. I mean, I I I, I laugh because because this like like so many other things. We're talking about an artistic process. It's it's all so subjective. When you feel that they're ready, if I'm working with an artist, we basically have to be in a place of agreement where we go, okay, this is ready to be recorded. That's that's pretty much the decided. That's that's where the decision gets made. Like when an artist can sit back, look at their work and go, I am satisfied with this. I never even imagined I'd be this satisfied with it, but by God, there it is. Yeah, that's awesome. It would be hard to describe in one sentence what gives records a legendary sound, but it would be easy to describe in three letters, API. For more than 50 years, API Audio has created large format consoles for world-class studios. Famous for co-founder Saul Walker's circuit designs and the original 2520 op amp, the sound of API consoles is the sound of great music. API now brings that legendary sound to your home studio with The Box, a small format console featuring the famous API circuitry that is the perfect analog addition for your digital studio. The Box gives you eight recording channels on the left with built-in mic pre's, high-pass filters, direct inputs, and custom loadable 500 module slots, and 16 summing 
scrolling channels on the right, or mix using all 24 channels, including aug sends, inserts, and silky smooth faders, feeding a master section with classic API compression, switchable monitor sends, and a pro talkback switch, and you've just upgraded your studio to legend status with The Box from apiaudio.com. Want to record killer drums in your home studio? Rockstars of Drums will show you how to record, edit, and mix pro-sounding drums with a Nashville session drummer and a Grammy-winning studio. Want to start mastering your own records? Rockstars of Mastering walks you through exactly how I mastered my own record using nothing but plugins in PreSona Studio One. Want to learn how to create a mix that doesn't suck but rocks instead? At Mix Master Bundle, I show you how to mix using stock and free plugins so that you can have punchy, powerful drums drums, guitars that rock, bass you can feel, and a mix that is in your face. Plus, it's totally free as my way of saying thanks for listening. Then go to MixMasterBundle.com to get started for free now and look for the clickable link in the show notes below. I do know as a producer, there are times where I will hear something that bugs me a little bit, but it doesn't bother the artist and I check with them. Sometimes, sometimes as a producer, you have to stick to your guns. Like you, you know something that you might need to explain why something doesn't hit you right. And then, and then I guess other times you just have to go. You know what? It's just a my reason for not liking this thing might be just as random as the reason of the artist liking that particular detail. So I'll let it go. Which is so important. It's really important because we are, you know, like all people, we have our opinions, and. What distinguishes our opinions from a common, you know, a lay person in terms of music production is that we can back them up with solid facts and we can explain, this is why I don't like this. And this is why I feel it's a, it's a red flag or detrimental to your music. But in some cases, yeah, it's like, I just don't like it, (laughs) (laughs) you know? And at that point, you have to kind of ask yourself, well, does that give it validity as being a point that I need to, you know, make to the artist and tell him that there's something he needs to fix simply because it's like rubbing me the wrong way when that rub actually may be something coming from something that's irrelevant to this artist, the type of music that he's trying to make. And it's and it's subjective, but a red flag of a degree that pertains only to me. Right. It might be a new thing. To, exactly. Exactly. And at that point, you know, you can you can talk to him about it, but you know, by and large, you know, you want to take a step back and go, I don't know if I need to like have this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Which yeah. means that as a producer, all these things we're talking about helping the band go through, you have to go through them yourself. You know, you have to go through your right. own why as a producer and really understand yourself and your own production voice, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, Michael. Well, we again, we appreciate you uh, hanging with us as you're as you're there in LA, but um, in the car. Here's another question yes. for you. Um, what are some? You, you talked also on the website about sometimes helping the band play with more feeling, and I wondered. There's got to be some good takeaways um, for us in that that topic. You know, if we're hearing a band not play with feeling, because I, I do see artists like lose touch with what's natural as soon as they're in front of a mic or in headphones or whatever. Mm. What are some basics yeah. there that would help us out? Um, well, you know, I mean, it, it depends what we're talking, what we're talking about. I mean, if you're talking about getting a person emotionally invested in what they're performing, or if we're actually talking about the, the, the actual concept of feel or groove, mm-hmm. um, you know, I mean, as far as being more emotionally invested in a piece of music, You know, again, it's like connecting with what it is that they're actually trying to say, like what this what this song is about. I mean, I've worked with people. It's funny on their own music. And I think that, you know, in to to a certain extent, like the ones that had a hard time with it, they just they, they just were completely emotionally disconnected from everything that they did. So I think at that point, you're not going to be able to get a whole lot out of out of them. As far as feel goes, that's a whole different uh, that's a whole different topic Mm -hmm. because it pertains more to like the actual relationship, like the timing relationships of the instruments themselves. And that's something that um, I've uh, 
I've studied over the years just because it kind of fascinates me and also because music is so machine based now. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I find people who like to listen to music respond to is um, is groove, you know, and it's not as easy to make a groove with things that are as linear as gridded tracks. Yeah. Um, it always cracks me up know, when you see pictures of like, you know, some new DAW and somebody drags a loop over from the side and they're like, look, my music, you know, for the yeah. floor kick and hi-hat. And I'm like, wait, yeah. it's got no feel at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a shame, but you know, like you go back to a lot of older records and, you know, it's, it's, it, it wasn't always about like great songs on those records. It was also about how ba how people played together yeah. as a rule. And a lot of the music that we listen to is based on music that came from Africa. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like we can't, it's, it's sort of undeniable at this point, like people playing together, doing African based music, you know, which obviously came here and became blues and then rhythm and blues and rock and rockabilly and all this stuff. Hip hop. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it, it comes, it comes from a very specific, um, I guess, arrangement of instruments. And I discovered over time. Time that people would always talk about, you know, all oh, the bass guitar is laid back against the drums, and it's like, nah, it's not. You know, you're listening to things from a comp most people are actually listening from the top down when they make comments like that. It's completely the opposite. On most records where there's like a really good rhythm section, the bass is so far ahead of the drums, it's ridiculous. Mm. Um, and yeah, and that's something that like people can be taught. You know, like they can actually, um, you can actually educate them. Um, the, the relationship of the bass to the drums is really important. And also the relationship of like the, um, the guitar to the bass and the drums. Mm -hmm. um, they're, you know, to, like if you listen to like old big band records and stuff like that, you'll find that everything that's playing in like the, I guess, tenor to soprano range is actually really laid back. So I started listening to a lot of older records and I, I discovered that like people were um, were um, putting guitars, like they were just laying them so far back. And it was, um, it, it, it was quite a revelation. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating. And I mean, um, I like the in-depth approach you have to that, to understanding that. In my experience, I, I discover things like, oh, sometimes when a, when a musician's trying to rock out with a guitar overdub too much in the studio, it's their hand moves too far and therefore they're striking the chord too late, you know, and, and yeah. it starts to lose the pocket yeah. that way. So it's like overexpression yeah, yeah. and things like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just that reminder, you know, there, as you say, there's so many... Um, yeah minute variations of timing and music and feel in that respect. And like each one has its own thing to address. Do you feel like the time you spent watching YouTube videos, trying out mix tricks and tweaking version after version of your mixes has gotten you nowhere? Have you been looking for a simple, straightforward, step-by-step -step process for creating a pro mix that won't take years to learn? What if you could have a Grammy-winning mix engineer who understood all your mixing struggles and could coach you through them? If you struggle with any of these questions, then the Ultimate Mixing Masterclass is just for you. Now you can discover the proven step-by-step -step mix system from Grammy-winning mixer Craig Alvin for consistently creating a pro-quality mix from your home studio that will sound amazing everywhere. Here are just some of the things students are saying about the Ultimate Mixing Masterclass. Absolutely the most informed Formative and helpful block of information and mentoring on the mix process I have ever been a part of. That was like sitting behind a mix engineer for years, watching and picking up tips along the way, condensed into a six to seven hour lesson. David P. Thanks for a great session, dude. Just when I needed the inspiration. John F. A true feat of greatness. It was really life-changing and worth way more than I paid. Mark R. I've literally watched it two times at length, taken a plethora of notes, then combed back over some sections even 
even more. You guys really knocked it out of the park on this one, and it was so incredibly eye-opening and useful immediately. What else can I say? Shane J. Amazing masterclass with Craig Alvin. My biggest takeaway was the concept of adding a subtle combination of distortion and compression to achieve a buttery cohesion in the sound. But there is so much more. Steve K. Listen, I appreciate you listening to this podcast, and I know you're trying to make your best record ever. But when you're ready to take your mixes to Grammy-winning quality, then you're ready for UltimateMixingMasterclass.com. Let me ask you one more question, if if you if you can. As a producer, um, here's a, here's a tough one on us. Uh, what is the risk of overproduction, and what does that mean? Um, well, <laughs> that's you, you just have to watch yourself. I mean, that's can that can be very genre specific. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that will happen oftentimes when a producer isn't sure, doesn't have his bearing. Mm-hmm. And isn't sure enough, um, or he is so kind of obsessed with his toys and you know all the stuff that he can do, um, or distracted um, that uh, he can you know just kind of go way way out. Oh, there's a kid. All right, it sounds like we yeah. gotta say goodbye, um, Michael. Yeah. Thank you so much for hanging with us, rock stars. Michael is picking up his his family right now, and uh, it was very kind to join us from. Driving around LA. If you uh, do, you, do we have one more t- question to say goodbye, or or we're, we should just say goodbye? Yeah, man. Yeah, right. go for it. Go so for this it. one, this one's related to uh, to you and kids and all that. Um, we take the way back machine. I think you. We asked you this in the last one, but if you want to ask uh, ask it again on this one, if you could go back and find yourself at a younger age, and you wanted to go back and give yourself one bit of advice and say, "Listen, Michael, here's the most important thing you need to know." about production, you know, to be a rock star of the studio yourself one day, what, what advice would you go back and give yourself about the production process? Calm down and trust yourself and trust your instincts. Love you know, that. listen to, listen to, listen to the voice inside it. You know, it sounds like hippy dippy shit. <laughs> well, for us on you know, Skype, it sounds a little like robots truth. too. Um, you know, <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, it's quite all right, man. It's quite all right. But, we're yeah, we're just thrilled to catch you um, uh, out and about. Um, yeah, I love that, man. Trust yourself. So great, great advice, great feedback. Not always the easiest thing to do. No, no, no. Very, very, very hard, actually. Um, Michael, thank you so much for being with us on Recording Studio Rockstars again. How can the Rockstars go and find you online? And if they are ready for a deeper level of production for their record, where should they go? Yeah, no, I'm on social media, Michael Beinhorn. And then there's my current website, which is michaelbeinhorn.com. Great. Um, Michael, thank you so much for being with us. Rockstars, I'll have links to all that in the show notes. And we'll catch you next time, dude. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. It's been unique. Indeed, man. (laughs) Indeed. Well, I can't can't wait to hear the next records you're going to make. So thanks for being with us here on the the podcast. Cheers, man. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you. Take care. Talk soon. Cheers. Thanks so much for listening to Recording Studio Rockstars. If you enjoyed the show and want to help make it better, then please share this episode with your friends on social media and leave a rating and review on iTunes to help the podcast reach more rock stars like yourself. You can click directly over to iTunes or go to rsrockstars.com slash review for an easy explanation. And remember to hit the subscribe button to keep up with weekly episodes. And if you're ready to make your best record ever now, then head over to Recording Studio Rockstars Academy, where you can start with my free course at mixmasterbundle.com and if you want more free content from recording studio rockstars all you have to do is go to rsrockstars.com slash email again that's rsrockstars.com slash email to enter your name and email and i'll keep you in the loop with articles videos podcast updates and even free gear giveaways for your studio just look for the link in the show notes below thanks so much for listening and thanks for being a rock star i'm lid shaw and this is recording studio rockstars now go make Make great music.
Recording Studio Rockstars would like to give a big thank you to our amazing sponsors who help make this episode possible. OWC, Jay-Z Microphones, PreSonus, Spectra 1964, and API Audio. You will find links to all these wonderful sponsors in our show notes. These are all things I highly recommend for your studio. They're going to help you make your best record ever. So thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.